In this problem, a cannon is fired horizontally off a cliff that's 15 meters tall, and the cannonball is shot at 40 meters per second. The first thing to do when doing a problem in which a projectile moves in two dimensions, in both the X and the Y dimension, is to assign positive directions for each. For this problem, I'll make to the right the positive X direction, and I'm going to make downward the positive Y direction. And the reason I do that is because nothing in this problem moves upward. The cannonball at no point is moving upward, the acceleration due to gravity is always downward, and the distance it moves is downward. So there's no reason to make up the positive direction. So now I'll write my given information. I'm going to split my given information into X and Y components. This velocity of 40 meters per second is in the horizontal direction, so I'm going to place it in the X column. There is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. The only thing that accelerates the cannonball is gravity, which pulls downward. So this velocity does not change throughout the problem, therefore I, can, therefore I can call it the average velocity. But in the Y direction, at first, it's neither moving up nor down. So the initial velocity in the Y is zero meters per second, but gravity accelerates it at 9.81 meters per second squared. I can call it positive because downward is my positive direction. And it's gonna fall downward 15 meters. I can now go about solving my problems. Part A wants me to find the time of flight. To find the time of flight, I can't use my X information. I just don't have enough information to select the formula. But for the Y, I can choose D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Remember to use only Y information. So distance in the Y, initial velocity in the Y, and acceleration in the y direction. So 15 is equal to the initial is 0, so 0 times t is 0. I'll just cross that out. 1 half 9.81 t squared. So in my calculator, I'll put 15 to bring the 1 half to the other side. I can multiply by 2. To bring the 9.8 to the other side, I'll divide by 9.81, and then I'll be left with t squared equals 3.058. If I take the square root of that, I get 1.72, uh, 1.75. t is equal to 1.75 seconds. Now on my answer line, I prefer to write 1.8 seconds because I want to stick to two significant figures. Not the biggest deal when we get to this type of problem. All right, for part B, I want to find the range. The range is the distance this projectile moved in the x direction. So now that I have the velocity in the x and the time, I can get the distance in the x. So I'll plug in 40 and 1.8 and my distance in the x direction will be 40 times 1.8, 72 meters. My final question is probably the hardest question. My final question is, what is the velocity of impact? Now, I know that the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. This is going to be 40 meters per second. But in the y direction, as it falls down, it accelerates. So I'll have to find the v final in the y direction. And then to get the total velocity as it impacts the water or the ground, I'm going to have to add those two vectors. And I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out how long that vector is. And I can use inverse tangent to figure out this angle here. So let's go ahead and do that. First, the final in the y could equal squared equals v initial in the y squared plus 2ad. That's one of the many formulas you can choose to use. So v final in the y squared, v initial is 0, 2, 9.81, 15 meters. And v final in the y turns out to be...
17 meters per second. So we know that the projectile is going over at 40, but it's going down at 17. And so to get the resultant, I'll do the Pythagorean theorem. V final squared equals V initial, I'm sorry, V final in the X squared plus V final in the Y squared. V final squared equals 40 meters per second squared plus 17 meters per second squared. And V final turns out to be 43.5, so we'll say 44 meters per second. All right, we're going to need that in a minute. Now I want to find the angle. So if this is 17 and this is 40, I could say tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tan theta is equal to 17 meters per second over 40 meters per second. And theta turns out to be the inverse tangent of 17 divided by 40 try that again, 17 divided by 40 is 23 degrees. So my final answer for this problem should be 44 meters per second at 23 degrees below the horizontal.